Grade 10 IB IT Theory. This is Module 2.3 Basic Concepts of System Software. So, when we talk about system software, it's basically the operating system and utilities, as we will see later. The operating system, on most of your computers, this will be Windows 10. What does it do? All it does is it controls all the activities taking place in your computer. Lots of people like to be in control, and that's what the operating system does. It controls. So, in more detail, what exactly does it control? If you picture your computer, like on the right-hand side here, the main components are the output, the screen, the input, um, which is your mouse and keyboard, then your CPU is a very important part, the memory is a very important part, and your storage is a very important part. So let's talk about what exactly the operating system it provides an interface. It's a way of interacting with the computer. It does the input and output management. So every time you press on your mouse or you type in a key, the operating system receives that data, that input, and does something with it. It also decides what should be displayed on the screen. It also manages the processes, what's going on on your CPU, process and task management. It manages what happens in the memory, in RAM, what is stored there, what data, what programs go into memory. And it also manages the disks or the storage. So for PCs and portable computers, the most, the most common operating systems are Windows. For Apple computers, it's Apple OS X. There's a free type of software called Linux. The little symbol of the penguin is for Linux. You also get Google's made their own operating system called Google Chrome OS. And then you get Unix, which is another operating system. For mobile devices, Apple devices use iOS, then there are Android, there's the Android operating system, you get QNX, and you also get Windows Mobile. There are three categories of operating systems, even on computers, um, on PCs. There are standalone OSs like Windows XP, which is the very old Windows, Windows Vista, which didn't last very long and wasn't very successful, Windows 7, then Mac OS X, Linux, these are all standalone for, for devices that work all on their own. Then we have network operating systems. These have extra features. They can control and manage shared resources like printers and so on. You get Windows Server or Mac OS X, OS X Lion Server, Unix, Novell Netware. So these are all special operating systems that can control a whole network. And then lastly, you get embedded operating systems. These are very small, um, much far less powerful operating systems that can be stored completely on a little memory chip. They are found on cell phones and scanners, e-readers, point-of-sale terminals, gaming devices, and so on. An example is Windows Embedded, Embedded Compact or Embedded Linux. Then a very important part of what the operating system offers is the GUI, which stands for Graphical User Interface. Basically, it's what you see on your screen, all the pretty windows that allow you to click and use your computer very intuitively. There are no more long instructions to remember. You don't have to be a, a genius to use a computer. You can just switch it on and it's usually pretty obvious what to do. There are lots of little icons with pictures and you know what's going to happen if you click on them because they're quite descriptive. You use your mouse or a pointing device to use the GUI. The GUI is interactive. It means you do things, you click, something happens on the screen and it's very intuitive. You don't have to be taught how to use it. The tuition comes from inside. 
You can do the exercise on page 138. Let's carry on with utility programs. Utility programs actually are part of your operating system and they do tasks which you need to do to manage your computer. They're not very exciting, but they are important if you want to keep your computer running smoothly. Things like deleting data, disk de defragmentation, antivirus software, software updates, and so on. So they are programs that perform system maintenance and admin tasks. Not very exciting. System software includes your utility software, but they can also be bought separately. Things like WinZip can be purchased separately. So here's some examples of utility software. Your antivirus software is a utility. Your compression software like WinZip, which allows you to make files much smaller or to make put all the data in a folder into one um, object so that you can easily email it. Um, also backup utilities, which allow you to back your computer up regularly and to choose what you want to back up regularly. Those are utility software. Um, then we get to device drivers. They're also part of your operating system. And they are very important little pieces of, of software. You can't run them on their own. But for every device that you connect to your computer, you need a device driver. So what will happen, you plug in a new flash drive and your operating system automatically finds the right device driver so that it can talk to that flash drive. Um, they, so device drivers allow the operating system to communicate with and to control a hardware device. They are pre-installed to an extent. Sometimes you get a CD or a DVD with the new, when you buy the new hardware, like when you buy a printer. Um, and new devices are usually automatically detected by the operating system. The driver is automatically installed and the device is configured automatically. So you don't have to actually go and download it usually these days. The operating systems have become very clever and they install the device driver all by themselves and you don't even know it's happened. But you do need to know what a device driver is. Sometimes when you're using an older device and you plug it in, the, the driver may not be found by your operating system and you may have to go and download it from the manufacturer's website to be able to use the, the, that device. Now, if you want to do a quiz on this topic, ask your teacher to find their Socrative quiz, which can be done to see how well you've understood this lesson.